Oh, hey, right. everybody. <laughs> I'm rolling with the LGBT, looking like we belong on TV. I'm rolling with the LGBT. Welcome to Queer Content. Hey, welcome, welcome. Today, we are going to be reviewing a French film, Portrait of a Lady on Fire, also known as something in French. Well, get your fire extinguishers ready, guys, because this is going to light you all ablaze. Portrait of a Lady on Fire has got everything. It's got fire, it's got ladies, and it's got portraits. So let's get into it. There you go. I'm just very caffeinated. Basically, the plot is... We're following our main character, Marianne, and she is a painter. She's going to this island? She takes a boat there. I don't know. Somewhere in France. She's going somewhere in France to paint a portrait of this other girl, Heloise, but the other girl can't know that she is painting a portrait of her because the portrait she is painting is going to be sent to a prospective husband and Heloise is not into that idea. Last time they tried to have a painter come, she wouldn't show the painter her face and he like gave up. It's good stuff. Yeah. It's secrets. It's a lot of like, okay, you be Heloise and I'm gonna be the painter girl. Ready? Okay. <laughs> I don't speak French and it shows. Uh, there are two queer characters. Their exact sexualities are not really clarified. Um, all I know about sexualities for them is they're two women who are into each other, so a little gay. And also we know that Marianne has had sex with a man before. So that's the whole read we've got on their sexuality. Which means that actually two out of four of the main characters in this film are queer which is a pretty good percentage. I would say that's 50%. And I would also like to say that there are only four characters that really have a part in this movie and they are all women. Yeah. The only men we see are like people rowing the boat. So I think that's amazing in and of itself. It's like such a small cast of all women and we only see things from their perspective, which I think is powerful and very cool. Very cool. What do you think, Kate? Absolutely integral. Indeed. I mean, the only story that happens is between those two characters. like. Well, and the, the yeah. servant girl. Yeah, that's true. She's she like is. their buddy. An unexpected plot line. But yeah, I mean, like without them, then you just have a really sad movie. Yeah. About that one girl. Yeah. But she does enjoy life, so don't worry about her. She's fine. <laughs> Everyone is fine. <laughs> um... Why are you laughing? I don't know, dude. I've had like 200 milligrams of caffeine in the last like hour. So I'm just like riding that wave. <laughs> I'm trying to talk about a serious yes, movie. Yes, yes, yes. They're both very complex characters. And I think it's interesting how their interaction with each other helps unravel their characters further. Because like there is so little dialogue and the characters are meeting for the first time at the beginning of the movie. Everything starts off very kind of like tense and very like uh, ambiguous, I guess. And as they get to know each other, they help each other kind of like come out of their shells a lot. And we get to see like the depth of both of those characters. Nobody is predatory. Nobody's annoying. Which we've been watching some movies like that. Yeah, nobody is a stereotype and nobody jumps off a roof. So that's pretty nice, I would say. Plus... It does revolve around their very, very sweet, beautiful relationship. I think it's my favorite romantic movie I've ever seen in my life. I mean, yeah, it's definitely up there for me. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, like, amazingly positive, given that a lot of the queer lady movies we have seen show a huge amount of, like, oppression and discrimination against those characters, which, like, is valid, given that that exists. But it's just so nice to see a movie, especially a period piece, where they don't really have an issue with being attracted to each other. There's no coming out. They both are just super into each other. They have, like, this really nice love affair. And it can't be because of societal pressure, but it doesn't, like, ruin it. You know what I mean? 
Also, it's just so pure. Like, the two of them being like, I love you, I love you too. Like, yeah. those moments that they're talking about, their, like, shared relationship, it, they're really sweet, and none of it's like, this was a mistake! Yeah. What am I gonna tell my mom? You know? Oh, and I also thought it was interesting how one of the characters, they kind of show their oppression of the time. Heloise, because she's being forced to be married to a man that she does not want to marry, like, before the movie starts, she was in, like, the convent, and through that, she found, like, some independence because she could, like, not have to marry anyone. She is, like, boxed in by the restrictions of, like, sexism and of the era. But we, in contrast, have Marianne's character, who luckily is able to be an independent woman in, like, the 1700s, which is crazy because she is a painter and because her father supports her and she's able to like take over the business and stuff so I thought that was interesting showing that like contrast between like freedom and then like being boxed in too I have a question yes was Heloise going to stay at that convent and like no matter what if her sister hadn't died in the very beginning is that like the understanding that was my understanding because she said she liked the convent and she loved the music there and she liked to just like read and she said she loved the equality there just being with other women yeah so my assumption is she did not want to get married yeah because i I mean i think that shows a lot more of the inequality of the time is that like that man wanted to marry somebody from that family for like Mm. a thing and then her sister dies, so she And the gets, family needs to, like, marry somebody off. Yeah, you so know? she has to marry him, and it's, like, a substitute. Which is gross. Yeah. And that they're just, like, sending him a picture, like, a painting, and that's, like, do you want to marry her or not? Here's Hope her, you like it. Here's her face. Not only does this movie, I think, do a great job with queer characters set in a certain time, but I also think it does such an interesting job with women in general. And, like I said, we only see women as main characters. And within this, like, sphere that they live, they create kind of this, like, perfect harmony among themselves. And it shows you that, like, even through the sexism and repression of the time, women were able to create these, like, safe spaces for each other and, like, support each other. Don't look at mine. Overall score for the movie in general. Kate, I'll let you go first. Oh, my overall score. Yes. Well, it fulfilled all of our criteria for being a perfect LGBTQIA plus film. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I would give it a solid 10 just because it's really sweet. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's like fantastically written. The way the director uses tension is so good and usually like I hate movies that they try to build up tension they give me anxiety and they're like usually kind of just relying on the tension yeah the way she did it was really cool amazing and it made the relationship feel that much better yeah through the use of silence and through the use of the music like the music was very intentional in it too well the music was terrifying (laughs) the part where all the ladies are like oh to be honest, like, I understand, like, her setting herself on fire kind of, like, by accident was, mm-hmm. like, she's under so much pressure. This is all so fleeting. But I was, like, this is so terrifying. Like, I have no <laughs> idea. And she's not even reacting to being You're set like, on fire. I will not get close to fire. Yeah. Fire festival. Get it? <laughs> yeah. So for me as well, I also give it a 10 out of 10. It is honestly one of the best movies I've ever seen in my whole life. Mm -hmm. Definitely the best queer movie I've ever seen. Even though, obviously, I haven't seen all the queer movies that exist. There's nothing wrong with it, honestly. It's, like, beautifully shot. Um, The script, I think, is perfect. Like, the lines are so minimalist, but the ones they choose to use are so good. The acting is amazing. They have great chemistry. It makes you feel a lot of emotions in a very, like, poignant way. And it's just so cohesive. The way that the plot flows together and all the symbolism that is used in it drives the idea of it home in a way that's not, like, beating the theme to death, but is, like, very clear and intentional about its theme. Because it's very, like, things are fleeting, 
but that's why you have to enjoy them so much in the time that you have it, and you have to appreciate like how beautiful things are before they're gone it's like aka if you were to set yourself on fire on purpose during our club women's hangout by a fire and you <laughs> died that moment would you be happy dying in that moment and I don't want to give any spoilers, but all I got to say is page 28. <laughs> if you don't go watch this movie, anyways, go watch it. Let us know what you think. Let us know if there's a different movie you would like us to review that we have not reviewed yet. And uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, bye-bye. I'm rolling with the LGBT. Looking like we belong on TV. I'm rolling with the LGBT. Page 28. Page 28. Page 28. <laughs> Page on 20. Yeah, whatever.